Hello friends, welcome back. It's the Quarantine Zone once again. And today I'm joined by the mega, Mr. Bruno Heinen. How you doing, Bruno? Hello. Thank you. Thanks for asking. <laughs> cool. Um, so Bruno and I worked on two of his pieces. It was actually a while ago that we, we started doing it, but you know, these things take time. And um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm pleased to be... Uh, be able to bring everyone two new brand new videos that are just duo um, they were going to be acoustic piano and electric guitar i think but i just bought a new a new acoustic guitar and um, i really wanted to try it out it looks nice right it's actually quite cheap and cheerful um oh cool man oh great thank you man yeah um, yeah, I don't know, like it, it always feels a bit weird, like buying anything, even food during, you know, in the last year. But anyway, I bought a guitar, so, so that happens. Okay, um, Ms. Edwards is saying we can hardly hear Bruno. So Bruno, I don't know if you could, can you maybe talk into the mic a little bit? And I'll tell you what, I can turn, that's maybe a little bit better. I'll. T I'll turn my volume down. This is going to really test my like advanced stream. I think this is going beyond my um... talk a little bit now, Bruno. I don't want to Mate, you're actually ma <laughs> Sue says not really. You're actually maxed out this end, man. So where, where's the microphone? Is it in that um, in that thing? Earlier, there was a massive delay when we did that. So I think um, not to, uh, yeah, yeah. Can you can you maybe pull the mic around a bit? I know it's a bit weird. You know, I see people doing that on a train or whatever. It is still quite quiet. It is still quite quiet. Um, I'll tell you what, I'm gonna turn my volume down so that it's a little bit closer to Bruno's and we'll see how we get on. So thank you very much for flagging that. I'll um, shout, I'll shout. Do bellow, bellow, be like a loud, like a kind of, you know, sports fan in the pub or something. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, okay. I mean, this is unbelievably exciting, isn't it? So <laughs> I live stream. Absolutely. Um, yeah, all right, what was I saying? Um, so yeah, we've got some music and I'm really pleased to talk to Bruno. Um, oh, Sue says can't hear at all. Well, I can hear Bruno. So people, I hope, I hope that everyone will turn their volumes up on their computers and we'll, we'll just see how we go. Um, hopefully the compression on all of the platforms will sort the rest of it out. I literally have no idea what else to do. So we're just gonna have to kind of go with it but thank you for, for letting us know so i first heard bruno play well actually i can't remember when because i've heard you play a bunch of times bruno but i i heard you play at the con the con constitution was always great and it was great because it was a double bill and it was usually really interesting stuff and um you were playing a set there and you played bartok but it was with Larry Bartley, and I think it was Gene Calderazzo, right? Do you remember that? Yeah, it's actually with Andrea Di Piazza. Oh, yeah. And, uh, and Gene Calderazzo. So that's okay. my current trio right now, is with, uh, with those two. And that's actually expanded into a quartet now. So that's the thing that I'm doing, really, is uh, playing with Andrea and Gene, and we now have Heidi Vogel on vocals. Great. Um, so that's kind of, kind of my thing, and we've got yeah um we just did a few gigs before the summer and we've got an ep coming out with that project next year and looking forward that's really what i'm really what i'm looking forward with with that with awesome those, with, with this quartet um but that gig you're talking about at the con with for that record we, we made a record as a trio me andrea and gene which yeah as you say was loosely based on on the bartok eight improvisations you know that beautiful suite um which I've been interested in for a long time. You know, I played it a little bit when I was in college. Um, and it's not, I, I didn't really use anything that Bartok wrote as 
apart from a few harmonic ideas here and there, it was more using the Hungarian folk melodies that he had based his piece on uh, as a starting point for a for an eight movement suite, basically. Mm. Um, so that was that project, and, and uh, went into the studio and did that, and uh, a few gigs, and then unfortunately COVID happened. So you know we had a we had a nice big tour for that uh, in the books, but uh, yeah, some of those are going to happen next year, and and now I'm happy to say we've got Heidi on board. Great. Yeah, that, that was but that was a lovely gig and the con is like it's such a great place it's such a great hang it's such a great center for so much uh sort of original music so yeah um it's cool that you mentioned that yeah 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 um that's great so i like the way you went to the source the same source that bartok went to um yeah, right. rather than just maybe taking inspiration from from his work and also, I'm super curious to hear um, how that sounds with a vocalist, because that wouldn't have been the obvious uh, instrumental choice to add, um, at least not what I would expect. But, you know, I never would have expected you to make an obvious choice, knowing you. So, <laughs> yeah. well, um, well, I mean, I, I've been working with Heidi for years. I mean, I've been playing with her for, I don't know, 10 years or something. And I've always wanted to, to, to have her in, in, in one of my projects, mm. you know. Um, and she's now joined us in this project. I mean, we're not playing that music really with her. It's all new music that I've written over the last year and a half. But with she's she's um, singing with us wordless wordless vocals. So you know, there's no lyrics or anything. And she's like a you know a sort of uh, okay. We may have lost Bruno. I have lost Bruno. Hopefully Bruno will come back. Let me talk a little bit about Bruno. Sometimes I research people really thoroughly, but with Bruno, um, I didn't really need to because he's so prolific. There are just so many amazing and varied projects that he's done. So I can just talk about them really. Um, and I've kind of loosely categorized them uh, so that I've got a big set of, of albums that he's worked on uh, interpreting music by other people um, so hopefully he's going to jump back on any second and uh, and we can ask him about these but just check out the the range of music you've got here these first two albums really really sum it up for me um, he's he's a really inspiring musician and my favorite type of musician who's just kind of quietly getting on with it just getting on with the music um, and so I, I really respect him for that. So check, check this out. This is um, a Stockhausen project, Tear Christ, which um, the, uh, the Zodiac signs. All the way from that to this, <laughs> duo interpretations of Twinkle Twinkle Little Star to slightly closer to home for jazz audiences, Bill Evans with the great Danish guitarist Christian Boring, who now resides in Australia. I don't know if maybe you'll uh, you'll watch this one day, Christian. But hope all's cool out there, man. See you next time you're in the UK. And um, okay, we're still going. There he is. Bruno's coming back. Let's get him. <laughs> Can you there get him? he is. Yeah, yeah. You're back, man. It's all good. I was just okay. So we went. We just went through Stockhausen, Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, Bill Evans. <laughs> And we're just getting on to David Bowie. Yeah. We got okay. Bernstein. We got Reem Kalani. You've just got an unbelievable range of uh, of music there. Um, yeah, too much music, you might say. Uh. <laughs> nah, never. No such thing. Um, I mean, I, I don't. We'll, it'll probably be like a four-hour stream if we if we go into all of these. But um, maybe tell me a little bit about the Stockhausen one, and then about Twinkle Twinkle. Okay, so um, I mean, I'm from a I'm from a classical background, you know. Both my parents are actually three generations on both sides of classical musicians. Um, so um, yeah, my uh, my mum's a violinist, my dad's a cellist, and they were in uh, Germany in Darmstadt around you know around the seventies, um, kind of when all of this new music was happening with Stockhausen uh, John Peters 
and worked with Stockhausen. Wow. Um, and my uh, my parent, my dad acquired like five of these Stockhausen music boxes from his, you know, I mean, what most well-known piece, Dear Pride, which is a piece of a uh, cycle of twelve movements, which are uh, serial and written for music boxes. They were actually written initially for a, a theatre piece. Hmm. This crazy theatre piece, music in the belly. Um, and these music boxes are kind of thrust through paper mache first and then you, you wind them up and play them. Uh, so, uh, but they're beautiful. And, um, uh, and uh, these were just around at home, you know, these boxes. And I was always interested in them and interested in doing something with them. Um, and improvising around these boxes and around these melodies and arranging these melodies. Um, and then it was just about thinking who I'd like to do that with, you know. Um, so yeah, we recorded that with Tom Challenger and Fulvio Segorska um, and James Alsop and John Scott and Andrea Di Piazza. Um, Shabaka was actually in the first incarnation of the band. Wow. We did a few gigs with Shabaka uh, on bass clarinet and then he was told me he was focusing on the tenor. Um, and then I met James Allsop, and so you know we started playing together, and then he joined the band, and we did a bunch of gigs and that recording. And yeah, um, I don't awesome. know. It's uh, it's quite you know um, interesting to get into that sort of headspace of uh, these twelve tone melodies, mm. um, and how to improvise around the music boxes, and how to integrate that, and I kind of use the sextet in different ways and you know, smaller incarnations of, sort of duos and trios and whatever and experimental through the gigs and whatever but yeah that, that was kind of that record amazing i was lucky enough to see stockhausen um i don't know if perform is the term i suppose so but um yeah it was at the queen's hall in edinburgh and he was performing contact which is yeah, the piece wow. about when he was abducted by aliens yeah, um right. Apparently so, <laughs> um, but so they, they had all of these speakers all around the room, and they dimmed the lights, and it was really it was really unusual because lots of people in the audience were sort of expecting this, and people just kind of st like started to lie down, in the you know in the kind of alleyway kind of thing, which was probably against health and safety, but it was just to really immerse I in that kind of spatial stuff that's going on yeah. in that piece and. Um, yeah, it was really cool. He gave a little speech about the piece, and um, great. yeah, so so that was great. Um, I, I was pleased to see him before he uh, before he crossed over. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, back to the stars. Or yeah, that's it. Yeah, <laughs> back to the aliens. Um, okay, so maybe it would be nice to just uh, like since it's such a contrast, we've got there. You know, Stockhausen is um, reputed as uh, you know there are these graphic scores there's some of the most complex and, and really wild and ambitious music um, that's possibly ever been conceived or performed and then we've got twinkle twinkle little star so yeah tell me about this that that's a nice a nice contrasting project i imagine or yeah well that was the first record i made is with uh john scott and andrea de piazza and we lived together I mean, we went to college together and we lived together for a while and we were, were hanging and playing obviously and after a while we were like oh we should make a record and i just come from a classical course you know at the royal college of music mm. um, and then uh, before i'd even touched i met those guys and um i played the mozart variations on twinkle twinkle and mm. um was it seemed to be uh, a good challenge to write 10 variations on a theme of Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. Um, and so I wrote nine and Andrea wrote, wrote one. And um, yeah, I mean, uh, it, was, it was really an excuse to, to record something to document where we were at with that trio and to call Julian, you know, to <laughs> Julian. Yeah, yeah. You know, and he was into it, you know, from the start. And so that was that was really nice for us, you know. So um, he's on a few tracks, and and it was just it was just a, a, you know, um, it doesn't go much deeper than that. The reasoning behind it. Yeah, but, cool. Um, do you know what I mean? It was more of an excuse to 
Yeah. I guess I guess it, it kind of ties in with how I think about a lot of composition, really, which is like I like to have some kind of parameters or starting point, you know, to give myself some kind of description. Mm-hmm. Um, so a theme of variations is, is certainly one of, you know, uh, signifies that. One way of so doing it. it. It's one way of doing it. So maybe it ties in a bit with that. Yeah, yeah, wicked. Um, yeah, let's get back to that, actually. So when I saw you play at the con with the Bartok thing, there was there was definitely a lot of really interesting, um, a lot of interesting sounds, a lot of interesting chords. And a while, m- many years ago, I had, um, I discovered a piece called Double Sun by Ben Mondo, who's one of my favorite, I think he's my favorite guitar player, one of my favorite musicians ever. And um, this piece, Double Sun, he's dropped the bottom three strings of the guitar to a sort of drop C tuning. And he's droning those strings. And the top three strings are playing this thing that's kind of to start off with in F sharp minor or A major. So you've got this kind of friction between the two keys. And also the top three strings, the A major figure is in, is kind of in five. And the low C drone is kind of in three but the thing that's in five is grouped in four and the thing that's in three is grouped in four. So basically there really are two gravitational forces pulling your ears in terms of the keys and rhythmically as well. Um, I've just got a text. I hope people can hear this. Um, Okay, yeah, thank you, the person who sent me a message. Double sun. Um, This piece is is so beautiful. When I was listening to it, I just, it just came on on the it's on the Oceana album by Ben Monday. Everyone go and check it out. And it's just beautiful music. But I was trying to understand why it was so beautiful. And I had no idea just how, I don't know, sophisticated or maybe it's not even that sophisticated. It's actually just really simple. It's two simple ideas and you allow them to evolve. Um, and what Ben does, it's a long piece. So the thing in A develops and moves through keys and the thing in C moves as well. And there are these points of reconciliation. If you think about you know, the orbit round two suns, there are gonna be points where you're equidistant and where, you know, I don't know. It's um, certainly an absolutely wonderful concept. So that led me to take a lesson with Ben and I was asking him about this and he just said, well, listen to Stravinsky, listen to Bartok, listen to, listen to loads of stuff. Yeah. And so I checked out the Microcosmos, these very famous pieces by Bartok, which are apparently for kids, but um, some of them are very, uh, well, the idea of having the right hand in one key signature and left hand in another key signature, I mean, that, that wouldn't really be considered child's play. You know, if, you, if I brought that to you on a, you know, on a jazz gig or something, you, you, you know, most people yeah, would yeah, be yeah. like, whoa. Um, so, so when I heard you doing the Bartok there, was that going on? And then I heard you do a stream. I was, we, we, were, we were on the same double bill, right? Yeah. Um, on a stream thing. I was playing with Ivo and you had a gig and I watched your set and you were playing your beautiful pieces which were really, really exploring, uh, at least as far as I could tell, exploring the friction between nice. you know, one or two keys. And I just thought, yeah. this would be wicked. Um, yeah. Got to hook up with Bruno. So maybe what we could do now is play a video and then yeah. you can you can talk about it, and you uh, you can talk yeah. about if everything I've said is completely wrong or part right or whatever. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. So, w- what do you think should, would should come first, Bruno? The W or uh, uh, problem equals chance? Oh, you choose, man. I'm 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 you choose. I love I'm going to go the W. Here we go. This is a Bruno Heine composition. Okay. The W. I hope you like it, folks. Cheers.
Yeah. Wicked, yeah, man. Yeah. Man, such a crazy tune. So tell me. So Omar. Yeah. Hey, Omar, thank you for, for tuning in, man. Glad you like it. And yeah, man, it's Thanks angular. So, so Bruno, what's what's happening there? Why does it sound so cool and a bit weird? Uh, well, um, I guess uh, quite a long time ago, uh, I started playing quite a bit of Messia. Um, I played the theme of variations a bunch of times with a violinist. And I think that's where I got interested in this, because there's a passage mm. which is basically polychords, but just a triad in the right hand. And a different triad, I mean, a different a triad in a different key and mm. in a different inversion in the left hand. Mm. And I became interested in just how, like, uh, how much changing the, 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 the inversion of a triad changes the quality of the sound. Mm. So how different E over C sounds mm. than just C or G mm. over C. Mm. I mean, sorry, C over G. Yeah, yeah. Um, you, you get what I'm saying. So I'm just saying, like the, the different inversions, like how, how the strength of of change, how how much that changes the quality of the sound, mm. and then um, different combinations of different inversions in the different hands, and then become became interested in improvising in a way that you can kind of choose the strength of the line that dictates what you're going to do. But if you've got a first inversion D flat triad mm -hmm. in the in the right hand, and a second inversion D major triad in the left hand, and just saying I can kind of either play in G or in D flat, yeah, and just go for whatever you're doing, and and that being the thing that holds it together, yeah, does that make oh. sense? yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Because uh, that's kind of how I analyze what's going on in a lot of Messiaen and Ligeti. And, do you know what I mean? Because if you have like parallel polychords like that, mm. um, it's, it's more the strength of the line and the linear thing that's mm. going on that holds it together. Uh, if you just put it down on its own, it's a bit like that. But if, you, if, it's, if it's getting somewhere and it's more about an arrival point mm -hmm. and how you get there, that's really, that's interesting for me. Do you, does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's really interesting. Um, I'm just gonna switch the light on here. It's like yeah, do it, do it. Uh, when Bruno was talking about that, I was thinking about um, how one of the things that draws people, well, certainly drew me to jazz was this whole, you know, these colors and the dissonance and, you know, playing out and, and stuff like that. And it's very hard to, con to, to sort of teach um, younger pupils about how to do that because there's just something about the narrative and the following a thread, which is strong, and it will go outside the key, but because it's a strong enough idea, it just works. Yeah. Um, so that's, I think that's kind of what you're saying, Bruno. I mean, that, that, comes, that, that, that comes back, uh, that's kind of a recurring theme, really, with some of what I've been doing. I mean, you might get, we might get onto it, but um, I spent some time with Fred Hirsch mm. in New York, and he was telling me the same thing. I mean, when I was asking him about his contrapuntal playing, mm. you know, and I, I basically asked him, what are you thinking about? Are you thinking about the line? Are you thinking about a rival point? Or are you thinking about the harmony? Or are you thinking about, you know, each individual, the ergonomics of where these fingers are going and where these fingers are going? Mm. He was like, kind of all of them. And he was like, but to be honest, if I'm at opposite ends of the piano, I can't really control all the pitches. But what I can do is make each line really strong mm. and think about an arrival point okay if you do he was like if you do that then you're wow. gonna be okay wow it's, it's like, really like stepping into the unknown yeah like That's allowing cool. that to happen and he plays with his eyes closed as well he's never he's always plays with wow his eyes closed. okay like everything he's ever played has been with his eyes closed so yeah you really can't control it and if you're playing four part stuff in the middle with your eyes closed do you know yeah. what I mean? it's all about hearing where each line is going and having that arrive somewhere. But yeah. he's saying that is, that is stronger to him. That's a stronger consideration than the harmonic thing. Mm. He was like, and uh, he was like, the harmonic thing is kind of somewhere up here, but really down there, it's about the strength of the line. Mm -hmm. 
there's um, there's definitely chords are given maybe a little bit too much importance or or they're given a lot of importance and, and then I'm not sure that we're ever told, okay, don't worry so much about chords to think about the other things, you know, like yeah. I, I don't remember anyone telling me that. You just kind of figure it out yourself. Um, hey, uh, hey, Brandon, how's it going, man? Thanks hey, for, Brandon. Uh, Brandon doesn't have a gig. He probably does have a gig, actually. He's probably on a gig. <laughs> nice to see you, Brandon. Um, so, okay, we were talking a minute ago about Bruno working with other people's compositions, I mean, you know, they're hardly going to resemble, uh, you know, exactly like the original things. But um, let's talk about some of your projects that you're that you're working on. And Brandon doesn't have a gig. So if anyone else is out there and doesn't have a gig and is just hanging out <laughs> like me and Bruno, <laughs> that gig, then, you know, we welcome you. We don't have gigs either. And um, but that's we become we don't have gigs. But it's becoming increasingly rare, which is why the, some of you might have noticed the quarantine zone is becoming a little bit less frequent. Um, you know, quality control is important to me. So Bruno, I actually remixed, I got these remixed. My good friend An good. Andrew Small mixed these. Thank you so much, Andrew. Thank you, Andrew. Um, yeah, so I was just saying about, I, I, I pulled a couple of um, album covers that I'm particularly interested in of yours um yeah let's let's check out this one tell, tell me a little bit about this and and or this okay well i'll talk about mr vertigo the okay. out of doors project which well that was the bar top thing um, okay so yes that, so so we covered a little bit on that yeah um uh, but that is out there if anyone's interested and we are still playing some of that music on some yeah. gigs um but um yeah looking ahead with that project we're we're looking to record a new album with with Dean and Andrea and, and Heidi in the new year and we've got an EP coming out in the uh, in the spring summer great uh, on Ubuntu which I'm excited about so um, that's going to be cool and uh, what I was going to say uh, what, what I was going to say yeah um, Mr. Vertigo this one yeah um, yeah so um, that's kind of the result of my PhD research. Dr. Heinen, eh? Dr. Heinen. Um, so Tell me. That, the the um, title was Counterpoint in Jazz Piano with Specific Relation to the Solo Work of Fred Hirsch. Okay, um, and it's kind Re really quickly, if anyone doesn't know Fred, what would be, what's, what's one of your favorite, favorite songs to check out and favorite performance of a song? Oh, or, man. Uh, or album? So much. There's so much great stuff. I mean, anything with his current trio with uh, Johnny Bear and Eric McPherson, um, uh, the duo stuff with Bill Frizzell, um, mm. you know, uh, any of his solo stuff. There's one called Alone at the Vanguard. Check that out. Okay. If you want to check out, you know, his, his contrapuntal playing. Yeah. Uh, my favorite trio record of his is called Whirl. Okay. Um, so, yeah, so just. I mean, there's, there's loads of stuff out there, and it's all great. Um, so I was kind of using his um, approach as a starting point for, um, as, as a, kind of as an excuse to, to, to build a solo language. I'd never done a solo gig before starting the Wow, PhD. wow. Um, so it was really about setting myself a challenge of like, can I do a solo tour? <laughs> but by the way, when I said wow there, I'm kind of the same. I have done solo gigs, but I've been, I've been asked to do some recently, and I, I'm kind of not ready. I, I can't deliver it how I want to deliver it's it. It's a different so, thing. Yeah, so it's that's why I said wow. I wasn't like, oh, how come you've never done a solo gig? Yeah, <laughs> but, yeah no, of course. Yeah. No, no, yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, it was really. I mean, the whole, the reason for doing the for doing the doctorate was mostly for trying to build a solo language myself mm -hmm. and then um and then uh obviously uh it's great to use it as an excuse to spend some time with fred in new york mm -hmm. and i had you know that was i was very lucky to have that funded and get out there and spend mm -hmm. some time with him so that was really um great um and the resulting album is this album mr vertigo which yeah. is all solo i mean the 
there's some overdub stuff and there's some stuff on keyboards and I mean on, on roads and whatever um, and and there's a lot of stuff on piano um, and it, it, it kind of represents my central argument uh, of my doctorate which is that counterpoint can be used as a freeing device mm. you know it sounds like a very restrictive thing you know you think Multiple parts going on. Sounds scary. Sounds, sounds like scary I've been and, practicing uh, playing like one line my whole life. Now I need another right. life to start practicing two from the beginning. Right. That's how I feel. But, but what I was arguing is that um, contrapuntal um, uh, freedom can be seen from the point of view of yes, more than one line. But you, you know, I was also looking at textual counterpoint or mm. harmonic counterpoint or. Um, rhythmic mm. counterpoint and mm. basically arguing that counterpoint can be the mutual relationship between any two musical ideas so if you have two musical things going on which are interacting mm. and um, playing off each other and there's some kind of tension and relief mm. that can be count that can be contrapuntal and um, that's what I was kind of looking that's kind of where I ended up with my research and yeah. Um, so, you know, I, I, I explore a different aspect of counterpoint in each piece. So there's one piece where I restrict myself to the simplest um, contrapuntal activity you can do on the piano, which is just two voices. So I just use the index finger on each hand. Wow. The, the improvisation. What's so the name of five, that piece? Five minutes. It's called Homage à Kurtag. Cool. So homage to Kurtag yeah. by Georgi Kurtag. So, um, yeah, so it's like five minutes with just the index fingers on each hand. Uh, and then there's the opposite end where I've got one where I've overdubbed like 15 times on the, on the piece. And it's like, do you know what I mean? And it's yeah. like, yeah. So in terms of linear contra counterpoint, there's, there's like some extremes going on. And then there's yeah. other things going on in between. So that's, that was, yeah, that was that kind of, that was that record. Amazing. Cool. Well. Bruno, if people want to kind of support you or, or, you know, just kind of read about you and, you know, what, where's the best place to do that? I mean, I guess all these records are out there in all the usual places, yeah, right? But um, they are. They are. I mean, go to my website and you can contact me through my website. I like hearing things from people, you know, uh, so Bruno Heinen and, you know, yeah. Yeah, or if you know, I try and keep it up to date with gigs and the way the details of where you can get any of my stuff is up there as well cool yeah yeah i like um you know when you check out a musician's website and like it's it's really out of date like you saw them play the yeah. night before but um or you're going to see them play tonight and but you're not sure which venue it is so you check it out yeah. and then like the last gig they've got listed is 2017 you're like yeah. naughty naughty got to yeah, do or the picture is from like 1991 or something. That's it. <laughs> Did I use a really young picture for, uh, for it you? Was, it was quite, it was about 10 years ago, but I, I'm happy with that because, you know, five you, years ago, five years ago. You look, you look good, man. I don't think like Thank pandemic you. and parenthood has taken, <laughs> I mean, it, maybe it's just the graininess. Um, <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. I'm Bra happy for the graininess. That's all good. Yeah, yeah. Brandon's is saying it could legitimately be their last <laughs> gig. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So, okay, great. Well, Bruno, thank you, man. Uh, and maybe if people want to play these pieces, I'm you're probably happy to share the, yeah, the yeah. compositions um, yeah. uh, with people. Maybe maybe they can buy them, or maybe you know, depending. Just just contact me. That's all. Yeah. All right. We've got the um, we've got the little section. Yeah. Fact of the day and kids write jokes. What do you think of this? In the event of a nuclear explosion, you shouldn't use conditioner to wash your hair. It will bind radioactive material to the strands. Okay. I don't, I don't use conditioner anyway, so I'm fine. And what about this? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Uh, dogs want to stop scaring cats, but one dog said why? There we go. Okay, problem equals chance. Let's go to the last Great. video. Great. I like the awkwardness of not being able to hear whether everyone's like, you know.
know, why does he always share those jokes? They're so weird. <laughs> and like, you know, maybe you didn't, don't find I liked, it that funny. I liked like, it. Yeah. I, 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 didn't like, really, I didn't really get it, but I didn't really get jokes. I, like I that, don't so really I get it either, but I think that's kind of the point <laughs> of, the, of the kids' things. But um, anyway, I think like social, or not that there was any particularly then, but social awkwardness is great. Um, <laughs> tell, me, tell me about problem equals chance, which is the second composition and okay, the final so thing for today. Oh, by the way, sorry, sorry, Bruno. If anyone's watching on YouTube, subscribe. Trying to get subscribe. over, yeah, subscribe. Just There's like a red button. Click on it, and then it's going to get, I'll, if I get over 1,000 subscribers, I'm going to be fabulously rich. I'm going to do loads more music with Bruno because I'm not going to have to do anything except for chill on a yacht the whole time. I'm going to buy a gold guitar. I'm going to buy Bruno gold piano. I'm going to buy Bruno a gold house. I'm going to have a gold house. I'm going to buy Brandon a gold well, I get my brass instrument. Um, anyway, so subscribe if you can, folks. And um, yeah, sorry, you were just about to say Bruno before I went off well, the rails. I was going to say, I do hope we get to do more playing together because we haven't really done much and it was really good to do this. So, you know. Yeah, let's, um, we'll do it. We'll do it. That, that would be good. Um, problem equals chance. The name comes from a, a Duke Ellington quote. Um, which is just like he was saying, every problem is a chance to create something. Mm. Um, so um, I really like that quote. And um, yeah, the, the, the tune is kind of um, concerned with a lot of the same kind of polytonal things um, and the use uh, of the double diminished chord. Um, so double diminished? double diminished where you've got two diminished chords happening at the same time wow um so uh i was just it's kind of been the two things that i've once i get on an idea i kind of write a few things sort of around that idea and it's kind of to do with that kind of polychordal stuff and two against three you know which is kind of just uh what i've been interested in rhythmically for a while uh, and how you know two against three or three against four work um, and the different ways you can use that so I guess that's that's what's going on in the thing but I really like what you did with it oh cool yeah well thanks man uh, yeah it's been it's been fun doing it and um, it's funny people I think this might actually be the first time I mean this is certainly the longest conversation I've ever had with Bruno and these are the first, these videos are, are our first musical interaction. Um, Bruno, I think Bruno might be having difficulty with the connection, right. but we're about to kind of finish off anyway. So, so it's all cool. Um, another quote oh, I from, lost you. Hello? Don't, don't worry, mate, I can hear you. In the middle of difficulty lies opportunity. It's a good one. There's lots of variations. All right, Bruno. Can you hear me? Say bye if you can. This is problem. Now, e I'm, now I'm here. Bye. Thank you okay. very much. <laughs> nice one, Brandon. Thanks for tuning in, brother. This is problem equals chance. Bruno, he Bruno Heinen. Check him out. He's prolific. He's just getting on with it, doing music. He's not doing s loads of social media all the time. He just does music, which is why he's <laughs> awesome. We love Bruno. See you soon, brother. Cheers. Thank you very much. See you soon.